The thing with geometry nodes is that they just got released. You wanna learn how to use them? That's great, here I am. Let's make a scene with some marbles, which my friend said look like some Ukrainian candies from Russian. So we're gonna scatter these marbles or candies using geometry nodes. So first we need something to scatter these objects on, right? So let's delete this cube and let's add like a plane. Let's make it say 10 of the size and we need something to scatter onto the surface so go to file append or actually you don't have to go there because i provide this uh, same microsphere or marble in the description of this video but i made it myself so that i have this in a blend file now we have everything we need i'm gonna delete this lamp here and let's open a new window here because we're gonna start messing with the geometry nodes so here we have a lot of windows and different uh, workspaces and we also have the geometry node editor so open a geometry node editor here and click on the object you want to add the uh, geometry nodes on so in this case the plane because we're gonna want to scatter the uh, spheres onto the surface of the plane so just like with materials I'm gonna click here and this creates a new set of geometry nodes this one here is the input so this means like in this case that's the plane the plane is gonna be the basis of what we do further with it and what comes out goes to the output so if I disconnect this you can't see anything if I connect this again you see the plane again right now if I want to scatter this sphere onto the surface of this plane, I have quite a lot of options. The first option is to go to point and use the point instance node. If I connect this here, everything disappears because we haven't specified what we actually want to instance on the surface of this plane. So select the sphere and you see four spheres, spheres have appeared, right? and they are exactly in the locations of the four vertices of the same plane. What you also see is that we haven't got the plane here anymore. It's completely lost. So the reason is that when you connect this that way, you see we got a plane here. When you connect this that way, we got some balls here, right? But we don't get both. And that's because we can't get these two to be in the same input, you know? This doesn't work either. Let's use something called a join geometry. So we join the added geometry and the original geometry geometry into one group and now we have the plane and we also have the balls or the marbles or the Russian candies and what we're going to do next is that in order to make these balls like appear more random and more natural like in real life I should make them smaller so I'm going to use a um, attribute node and where I'm going to use an attribute node is that in the geometry node editor all the data of a mesh is going to be stored in a let's say a box and it has a name on it for example let's say scale so if I have a box that is called scale, all the scale data of all the objects in the scene is going to be stored in the same box. So if I want to change the scale of these objects, I have to change the contents of this box or this attribute. So here I have a lot of attribute nodes. The easiest one is the attribute fill. Plug it somewhere here and right now it does nothing. And why it doesn't do anything is that here I have the attribute socket. And I have to type in the attribute I'm going to want to change or the box I want to get open and the value that's going to get inside of this box so I'm gonna type in scale here and everything disappears all the objects have the scale of zero and if I make this bigger the spheres start to get bigger as well now we have the scale in a relatively reasonable place but they're very 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 evenly placed here we can use another distribution node and this is called point distribute pretty much the same thing as the point instance but it distributes randomly as you see here the density is one right now and we have four of these scattered in a rather random way now if you increase the density we get a lot more but they're also intersecting and this used to be really hard to avoid with particle system for example but in this case we can avoid that we go here here it is random very random as you see and we can change it to poison disk Poisson means um, fish in French actually. So other than the fish talk here we have the distance. This is the minimum distance between objects. So if I start to increase this ever so slightly, all the spheres that are intersecting are getting removed. And when I increase the density, at some point it just becomes impossible to add any more spheres. So now that we have all the spheres here, let's start randomizing the scale. We probably need to change the scale attribute again, right? Because the scale attribute contains the scale of all these individual spheres here. So let's see if we have a randomized node here. We have color ramp, computer fill, math mix, vector math, and randomize. Here we have either float, vector, or boolean. Float means single value, vector means three values, and boolean is either true or false, but I don't know how we could use this here. So let's use a float, convenient to use with scale, and let's type in the scale attribute, which is what we're gonna change here. So now the attribute box gets opened, uh, all the attribute fill values are getting overwritten by these numbers here. So the minimum scale is zero and the maximum is one. And as you see, the maximum is way too high. So let's put it smaller, let's make this smaller as well, like 0.05. Right, this looks rather nice. 
Now that everything is uh, randomized and looking really cool and natural, there's a problem and the problem is that all the spheres are exactly on the same Z location. So they have been cut through by the plane. Now we can move this all up, but this doesn't work because uh, for example, the little spheres have to be moved up by a certain amount, for example, let's say one, but the bigger one here has to be moved up by the amount of, let's say, 1.7. So we have to find a way to move all the spheres up by the size of their scale. Let's start by adding a new attribute node. Here we have the attribute vector math, and I'm gonna use it because the position can be expressed using three different values. We have the x value, we have the y value, and we have the z value. A vector contains three values, and so this is perfect for expressing, you know, this uh, candy's location, right? So here we have the vector math node. It has quite a lot of different options. We have a lot of mathematics here, and also we can change either the first one is going to be an attribute or a vector, and either the second one is going to be a vector or an attribute. So first let's start thinking what we actually need to change in order to, for this spheres to move up. We have to change the position, right? So the first attribute is going to be the position. The result is gonna be a change in the position again, right? So this means we're gonna take the position attribute, we're gonna open the box, we're gonna do something with the contents and then we're gonna close the box it is still a position box, but it has different contents inside of it. So here we see that type A is attribute, type B is also an attribute, and this is perfect because we just type in the scale and all the spheres move up by their scale because the position and the scale are being added together. And if you go to side view, you see all the spheres have been located exactly by the right amount. But there is a problem actually, and the problem arises when you start to increase the scale. So when I increase the scale by a large, large amount, you see that not only are they shifting on the Z axis, they're also shifting on the X and on the Y. So to solve this problem, we need to create a new attribute. And this attribute will contain only the Z value of the scale. So let's duplicate this vector math here because again, we are dealing with scale. So we need uh, a vector math node here. And let's delete everything that's contained here. So as I said, we need an attribute which contains only the Z component of the scale. So the base attribute is going to be the scale, right? Because somehow we need to get rid of the X and Y values and only keep the Z value. This will result in an attribute called the Z component, component of scale. Here is the scale attribute and it's going to be transformed in some way into a Z component of scale attribute, right? So for the attribute type B, uh, we can't use an attribute because we somehow have to uh, multiply different areas of this attribute, of this scale. So we need to remove the X and Y value. Uh, we could use a vector here. So here we have the X value, the Y value and the Z value. And if we set it to multiply, everything gets uh, multiplied by the value of zero, which essentially makes the scale all zero again and everything should disappear. Uh, but when we type in one here, we get rid of the X and Y values, but the Z component stays here, right? So now, when you go here and type in Z component, I shouldn't have used such a long name, Z component of scale, something happened is the good thing. Let's find out. So I'm gonna move this up. And as you see, they're only moving up on the Z component. And that's a rather good thing. So we have solved the problem. You may congratulate yourself. There is one problem left, and this is the rotation. As you see here, all the marbles or candies or whatever the spheres they are, they're rotated the same way, right? As you probably guessed, we need a randomized attribute node, and you may guess that goes inside of this attribute, of course, rotation. And as you see, something happened, and that's because we have one here and zero here. Now, this isn't a one degree rotation difference, this is one radian difference. And radians can be converted into, or degrees can be converted into radians by using the formula that, for example, you need a full rotation, 360 degrees, you multiply it by pi, and divide by 180 degrees. And this is the full rotation possible. So everything is as random as it can be. Here we have our lovely looking scene. Now we have done the scattering part to make our life easier, which is the point of geometry nodes, we can use quick controls. So from the group input down here, you see you have a little, little, little circle. And when you connect this to the distance, 
uh, you get under the modifier tab the distance control right connected to density let's say I also need the minimum scale and the maximum scale and by the way you can delete this attribute fill because everything that's going inside of this uh, scale attribute is going to be overwritten by this attribute randomize so this doesn't make any changes at all here now you have all these controls here and while they have names maybe you want to use your own names so for example here uh, by pressing n you can open the side tab and in the distance minimum let's say this is the minimum uh, distance which is very creative and pretty useless because it was short before now we still have to render this so I'm gonna go to the camera view gonna close this one here and let's use the long 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 known feature called camera view position is like that maybe and let's add some depth of field so enter the depth of field mode and you go to the viewport display, enable limits. Let's say we want to focus on this red one here. This is the most different color. I'm going to make the depth of field like really, really shallow, something like 0.5. Now I'm going to switch to cycles. Let's add some denoising here. And now I'm going to use an HDR, which actually isn't an HDR. It's more like a normal photo from my last tutorial. It was on planet Earth. And this creates a rather nice looking scene, I'd say. Now this looks very dark, go to color management, increase the exposure and to make sure you're not clipping, use the false color mode and if something becomes white, back off because that's clipping. So something like that, you want to preserve some details, go back to filmic mode, you see this is looking really bright and I found that if you bring down the gamma, it's going to create a rather beautiful looking scene and I can also increase the contrast here, like high contrast and this looks, this looks good. So that is how such a scene is made, buy yourself some milk drops and be happy, see you next time.